Now, as that uh, winter slowly approaches in the Northern Hemisphere and Europe faces that looming energy crisis, since the start of the war in Ukraine, of course, European and other nations have imposed sanctions and boycotts on Russia, including on its gas supplies, creating that energy pain for themselves. But while Europe scrambles to shore up its energy supplies, Russia has simply begun flaring the gas that would have been exported to Europe. Look at those emissions going up. It's easier to burn the gas off sometimes than to turn off the supplies. This means that the gas that should be powering Europe, the backbone of Europe's energy supply, is simply going up in smoke. More of the energy chaos in Europe. Joining me now to discuss this is Benny Pizer from the Global Warming Policy Foundation. He joins me from London. Good to talk to you, Benny. I'm fascinated by this uh, energy crisis in Europe because we know the war in Ukraine and the Russian sanctions have had an impact. They are pushing up gas prices. But don't, doesn't it also demonstrate how reliant Europe is on that gas and how it's put too many eggs in the renewable energy basket? Yes, uh, you're absolutely right. Um, the energy crisis, the energy cost crisis... Uh, has been accelerated by the war in Ukraine, but it actually started long before that. And the main reason is that we have no longer a diversified energy system. Um, we've essentially uh, sh more or less shut down coal, which means the only energy that can back up increasing levels of renewables is natural gas. And so, therefore, the demand for natural gas has gone through the roof. And we are unable to diversify to other sources because in Britain, for instance, uh, most old coal-fired uh, power plants have been blown up. So uh, in Germany, they're going back to coal, but in Britain, you can't actually because they, these power plants no longer exist. They've been blown up. Well, I noticed the same in Spain. Spain has not just shut down most of its coal-fired power stations, it's blown them up. They probably would like to be firing them up now. Yeah, of course, but that's impossible. And, of course, nuclear takes decades to build new nuclear. And so, therefore, the demand for natural gas is increasing and the prices have skyrocketed. And energy prices are unaffordable for millions of families and tens of thousands of businesses which will go under this winter. Well, this is going to be dire this winter, but also in the medium to long term, these problems aren't going to go away. What is the answer going to be? Are we going to see more fracking to get uh, more gas in Europe? Are we going to see a reversion to coal? Or do you think some will follow the French lead where they're going to start reinvesting in nuclear energy? Uh, all of these... Uh policies will have to change. And I, I guess that um, depending on which country, they will go for everything they can use to generate energy, including a return to coal, uh, a, a nuclear renaissance, which will take much longer, and, and fracking. Uh, Britain um, is sitting on huge amounts of uh, shale gas, Boris Johnson, uh, is a green campaigner who banned fracking. He's out of uh, the door now. I'm pretty sure the new prime minister who promised, both of them promised to start fracking. Um, yes, everything uh, will be done to bring down the cost of energy except the net zero policies. And so we have a problem here in Europe that most governments prioritise net zero and climate change over everything else, um, energy security, national security, social stability, they all come second, third or fourth. And so unless uh, we find a way out of this obsession at uh, prioritising net zero, it will be very difficult to change and bring in radical reforms. But not in China, as I mentioned in the introduction. In China, they're happy to continue to invest in coal because they want reliable energy. Yeah, not only reliable, but cheap energy. And, and they obviously uh, are overtaking the rest of the world. And they're just, you know, laughing all the way to the bank. They are. So they're say. laughing. At, they get stronger and they see us making ourselves weaker. It, it's, it's extraordinary. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us, Benny. I appreciate your time. Benny Pizer there with the Global Warming Policy Foundation.